Hey guys, so this video we are going to attempt to do the first pattern, pattern1.png. Uh, and the number could change depending on when you guys view this video, but either way, visually, this is going to be our target right here. So how do we create this inside of Designer? Well, it's all procedural, and what you really want to do is kind of look at the shape and try to break this down into smaller shapes. You can almost see where it's repeating. Um, so you can notice that this almost looks like a grid of about four by four, like that's one, two, three, four, four uh, vertically. So it's almost a four by four chunk. Now this means if I can just get one of these little sections right here built, it should tile automatically and we're going to get something really, really close. So let's try this out. We're gonna walk you guys through this thing. And this is kind of my finished version, uh, which I'll probably show you guys for every video, but I do wanna kind of discuss how we just build this uh, from scratch. Now what I'm gonna do, uh, since you guys probably don't have anything open currently in Designer, is we are gonna make a new substance. So Command N, let's do a new substance. When this pops up, um, you can call it whatever you want. I'll call this Pattern 1. We can leave the resolution the same. Uh, don't worry about picking your template right now. These are more important if you're doing a material. It's kind of like picking your preset when you're in Painter using that PBR metallic roughness. Since we're not really doing a material, we're just creating a, a procedural that we're gonna use in Painter. Uh, this at this point is kind of irrelevant. So let's not worry about that. So 2048 pattern one, just leave it empty. We're good. So let's hit okay. Now, as soon as I get in here, we're gonna rename this thing. Okay, so it's not even saved at the moment. Well, we can kind of go over here and save it. Um, the graph's already kind of named pattern one anyway. Actually, I think we're probably good just to start this guy. So let me kind of go back to uh, the reference one more time here. Okay, so we see a bunch of circles overlapping. Okay, I have one here in the middle. Actually, let's kind of look at this guy right here. So I have one right here. You can see there's one that overlaps with it on both sides and from above and below. So it's about... Uh, one, two, three, four overlapping circles uh, that, well, sorry, that overlap with one circle in the middle. So let's just figure out how we do that. Well, what we want to do is, is kind of figure out where these nodes are located. So a lot of these are going to be under the patterns. But what I'm going to do to make this a lot faster is just start using search commands. So if I do space, I can type something in. We're going to type in shape. Let's make a shape node. Now the shape node, um, when you kind of double click on it, you should see it in your 2D view, it's just a solid white color. Let's change this to a disc, okay, good. And now we wanna get this to be sort of a circle. And now we don't really have a circle here, but what we can do is when we start with a disc, I can do an edge detect on it to turn this to a circle. So let's try this out. We're gonna have a shape, edge detect, now, as soon as I, when, when I have that selected, when I do space edge detect, you'll just notice how it kind of connects right into it. And if you want to do, you can break connections. Uh, if you double click, you can kind of swap back and forth to kind of control which one's in the 2D view. Let's connect that back. All right, edge detect looks good. I want to kind of make sure that everything we're doing is a white alpha. This one feels backwards, but on the edge detects attribute, you'll notice there's an invert button. Let's invert that. All right, next issue we've got is this a weird issue happening on the border where it's kind of colliding. If I hold space or hit space, space is a really nice way to see what it looks like when it tiles. Okay, we have to fix this issue right here. So I'm gonna hit space, I don't like that. Let's try the roundness, let's bring that back. Okay, that's better. Um, now if I take the width down, you can see it's making it thinner or thicker. I don't know if that's really the issue. My problem here is that this is probably just a little too big and it's having a problem where it meets the border of the frame. So I think what I'm gonna do is back here on that shape, let's just bring down the scale a little bit like this. We're gonna bring that in. Okay, now I wanna kinda of get it closer um, to that the border. And if I kind of go back to the reference here and look at it, you'll notice that that shape just barely touches the border. It doesn't really kind of have that gap on the edge. So we're gonna go back here and just boost this scale up just a little more until it's almost colliding, but doesn't give me the artifact. Like something right there looks pretty good. We'll see how this looks uh, in just a little bit. Now from here, since I've kind of got this first shape, Let's see if we can kind of get this thing to tile. I might fix the uh, the thickness here real fast as well. Okay, it needs to be thicker. 
So let's go back here to the edge detect. We're gonna take that width. Let's do a five. Okay, it's probably about the right thickness. And I'm just gonna go back here and bring that scale down just a little more. So I'm just hitting the down arrow inside here to kind of scale it. All right, we'll go with that. Now, how do I get this to tile? What we're gonna do is connect this into a tile generator. Okay, so we're gonna, we have the tile generator. This is the input. We're gonna connect this to the input. If I double click in the generator, you can see nothing's changed. But down here, we have to tell it to use the image input. Now, as soon as I swap that over, you'll notice, okay, well, now it's repeating it. It's doing 10 by 10. If we look at the reference, this is gonna be four by four. So let's change that real quick. Four, four, perfect. Now I'm just doing this because I kind of want to see what this looks like tile to make sure it's going to work before I do any of the extra uh, building. We're going to go back here and just knock that scale up just a little bit. Right there looks perfect. Good. Let's move this over because we're going to give this a little bit of space. Now that I can see that it's tiling properly with this little circle, let's try to get some of these other shapes built. So I, this is where I need to do all the overlapping. Now to do this, because I want to have everything use the same thickness, I'm going to branch this off and move it into a different position. We're going to offset it. This is kind of, again, why design is so powerful, because I can now split this and use that same information in multiple areas, which means if I modify the thickness back here of that edge detect, it'll update on every single shape. So we're going to do a transform 2D uh, just make sure that this splits off into that. And remember how this thing tiles? So watch this. If I click in the Transform 2D, let's kind of go down here. Let's do a vertical offset. Okay, we're going to go to 0.5. See what's happening? Okay, so when you offset it, you'll notice it doesn't just disappear off the frame. It repeats because, again, it's tiling. There's one. Let's do this again. So I'm gonna click on this. We're gonna do Command D. Let's go down. Let's kind of go up above the other one right here. Let's pull this one back to zero on this guy. And we're gonna do offset on X. So I have the original circle. We have a horizontal offset, a vertical offset. Let's see what happens if we start combining these together. If you look back on the reference, see those shapes, how we're kind of building those overlapped pieces. Let's blend these guys together first. So we're gonna hit space, make a blend node, and we're gonna take this and combine it to the foreground and background. The order doesn't really matter for this one, but if I look at the blend's result, you can see it's currently only taking the A input, this top guy. How do I get them to combine? We've kind of done this a bit in Painter, but we're gonna change this to a max or an add. Max is probably gonna be better. Now we have that shape. Come back here. Okay, we definitely see that. Perfect, I like it. Now we wanna combine this with the circle. So we're gonna take another blend. Let's kinda of put this maybe right here. I'm gonna take this guy into this. We're gonna take the circular shape from the beginning, put that in the second input. Let's again do a max. Okay, there we go. And let's connect this into the generator and see what happens. Look what we've got. Now let me kind of come back and just double check what we have in the reference here. This is really, really close. So I think my issue at the moment looks to be that uh, the thickness is a little bit too big and I think the scale is not quite right. I need to get those circles to like kind of touch a little closer. So less thickness, a little bit bigger. We're gonna go to edge detect. Let's take this down to maybe a three. Let's see what a four looks like. Let me just double check that again. We're gonna go with a four. I think that's a little closer. See that gap that's forming? Now the cool thing here is because everything's kind of feeding off these two initial nodes here. If I go to the shape node, let's go to that scale and just knock it up. And because I'm viewing that final uh, tile generator, you can see how the whole graph is updating. Every single shape changes from that original node. And look what we've got. That looks like an extremely close match to the reference. 
awesome. So you can kind of tell this is a not a too much of a complicated piece, but hopefully that kind of makes sense. We're just starting with basic primitive shapes, edge detecting it, offsetting it vertically and horizontally, blending them together, putting them in the input, and then we end up with something that looks like this. So that is going to be the end of pattern one.